So, 45 minutes? Yeah, yeah so we've got about 45 minutes just for Q&A, um, just because we have to be out of here by 12.45, um, right. because there's a next group coming in at 1. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah we've got about 45 minutes to, for you guys to ask questions relating to what we spoke about. And uh, if we know the answer, we'll share that with you. And then also, if we don't know the answer, we'll just be honest with you and say <laughs> we don't know, because the worst, like the thing that we don't want to do is share an answer with you that like may have some error in there so uh, we'll just be dead honest about that and uh, and see how we get on sweet yeah andy please uh, phil's just going to pass you the mic if you can hold it real close to your mouth because it's yeah uh, i was interested to understand a bit more about what humility means as you're explaining um, definitely resonated with me when you're talking about when you made that choice to not eat meat anymore. Because that's something that happened to me as well. And it was, it was like a very strong feeling. It's hard to describe, but it just felt right. And I knew that once I'd made that choice, I wouldn't go back again. Which was different to a lot of choices I've made in other areas of my life. Um, and so I was trying to understand if that's what you mean in terms of humility and something that you feel a really, really strong connection with, that's almost like some kind of different level of awareness or something. But I wasn't exactly sure, so I just wanted to get your guys' view on that. I mean, yeah, sure. Um, what I'd say really is that the, the, the humble part the humility part with uh, with regards to what happened to you there is actually is in is in the allowance of that emotion and that, that them feelings to you know to allow yourself to feel those things about eating meat and uh, and what you know the practices that go on with it so it's like i don't know you could perhaps consider whether to i don't know whether when this happened for you but whether there was perhaps opportunities in the past to, um, before you actually had that moment where you realized it. There may have been opportunities in the past where perhaps you could have watched something or learned something and, and, and you weren't ready at that point to, to perhaps do that because you might have been caught up doing other things. That's certainly my experience, right? And the, the part of humility is actually in the allowance of them feelings and allowing yourself to connect with the reasons why you're doing it. So like you said, um, you, you allowed it to sink in deeply and you knew that you weren't going to go back. That is, yeah, the, a demonstration of humility um, to quite a strong degree because you really allowed those emotions to sort of flow through you. And that's why you didn't go back. Whereas a lot of the time when we lack humility is when we hear something and intellectually it can often make a lot of sense, but we're not like interested in really dealing with that just yet. So as much as we've heard it, we don't allow ourselves to feel it. And that feeling of it is the, is the part that was the humility. Why do we do that? Why do we not? It's often, it's often due to various reasons for different people, but generally speaking, it's, uh, I mean, certainly what we believe is that God's trying to show us um, various different ways that we, to grow in love. And God will work with whatever emotions he knows are prevalent in your soul and that particularly mean something to you at that moment in time. So it's like working with... Um, it's the same way you would with a, with a young child of your own. If you knew they were like, making a pretty big mistake, um, you'd want to try, if you loved them, you'd want to try and gently show them as, uh, as much as you can the, the truth of things. And that's where the, all the time previous to you making that decision, you'll have had small little moments and experiences that start to build this bigger picture in your head of, well, perhaps... Perhaps this isn't right. Yeah. yeah, in your heart, sorry. Um, perhaps this isn't right, and maybe I should look at um, vegetarian or veganism and things. And, yeah, why we do it, I would say, is a combination yeah. of our own will that sometimes we're not even too intellectually aware of. At times it can, it can take us in a direction we didn't know. And also God trying to show you those things. Um, yeah. That would be what I'd And say. also I'd probably say, you know, how you mentioned how it resonates so strongly that you've never, like, gone back on it from that point. And that's because you have basically got to a point in your own heart where you've actually have, have felt, like, the truth of that particular topic and you've seen the consequences 
like the painful consequences that occurs to other people, to the earth, you know, to the general population really, as to why the loving choice is to become vegan. Um, and obviously one of the hugest is the fact that if everyone was vegan, obviously the whole, there'll be no malnutrition in the whole world. So it's like you felt those in your heart and you've basically arrived at the truth of that topic. And once you receive uh, or get to a point in your heart where you receive God's truth and you're in harmony with God's truth on that topic, you will never go back because it's automatic from then on in your heart. And that is one amazing thing with God and one of the benefits of a relationship with God is that when you get to that point in your heart on that topic, it's all your actions from then on are just automatic. You don't even need to think in your head about, oh, I need to, you know, maybe... And also, you won't even start. You won't even have these cravings as well to go to meat and you know go to dairy products. You just won't because it's not there anymore in your heart. So, do you think you some way of applying that to other areas of your life, or have you just got to kind of let it happen? Because it wasn't something I planned being a vegan. It was just something that was just a really strong feeling, and I went. With when I think about how I get my finances in order or relationships or something, it's it's like I'm not quite there yet. It's <laughs> one we've got a fast track solution. But I think with humility, there's a there's a definition which Jesus often says is the willingness to feel all your your emotions. So I think that's really key. It's like having the willingness to feel all of your emotions, no matter where, when, whatever. So like before. When I started to cry, my emotion came up, and there was this little thing in my head that went, "Oh no, I'm speaking at a seminar, <laughs> and I know some of these people, and even Sarah, I'm like, oh no, I've just been working with her. I've only just met her." <laughs> so I got all these fears came up. So what would have happened was, if I wasn't humble, I would have listened to my fear, I would have suppressed those emotions, and I wouldn't have had the willingness to feel all my emotions. I'd have just been like this trying to get through it and you'd be like oh, what's going on with him and I, I wouldn't have be I wouldn't be myself because so why why wouldn't I be uh, why wouldn't I be expressing humility oh because I'm scared what you might think of me but when I release the fear of what you might think of me I will be humble to feel all my emotions even standing in front of this and if this goes on YouTube whatever like it doesn't matter it's just like because I'm humble I, I want to feel my emotions no matter what and then that's what will keep driving you. And then, like, you feel your real self. So in that moment before, like, I really felt my soul. And that, for me, is, like, the purpose of wanting to be humble. Yeah, yeah. I think a bit more in answer to your question as well, uh, the reasons why we kind of don't get to that point in other areas of our lives, it's usually because we've got, um, like, internal resistance in our hearts uh, to actually coming to the truth of a certain... Uh, to that certain topic and that's usually because of um, like painful emotions that we have within our hearts on that specific topic and we kind of tend to avoid them and you know try to like shut them down by going to certain addictions and like we constrict our lives basically when we do that so for example with money like we've like we've all got money injuries and, and errors from God's perspective and you know you see a lot of people um, it's very, you know, it's really varied with money. You know, you get people who just spend and spend and spend, and then you get others who hoard their money. And, um, I mean, like, from a personal example with myself, I've been looking at my money uh, errors uh, recently. And I basically, I knew in my heart that my stuff with money was not in harmony with God's view of money. And... I've, I've realized how important it is to basically get to God's truth on this money topic for a lot of future things that we all want to do. So um, the first, I, I kind of had to ask myself, um, like, what is, what is underneath? What pain is there underneath about money that I'm trying to suppress, that I'm trying to, like, put down that I don't want to experience? And um, when I let myself think about that and pray to God as well to help me at the time um, I started getting like feelings of anger come up 
and that's kind of looking at the world and how the world use, um, has, has been using money. And I've, I've basically had a lot of emotions and still got some, um, just how people kind of use money to gain power and control over other people. And um, I was just so frustrated about that. Um, and then I realized the reason why I was so frustrated about that and the power and control issue. And that was because when I was, a, when I was young and I was a child, my dad used money to gain power and control over me and he used to manipulate me with it. Um, he used to really, like, he used to be really, like, pretty cruel with, uh, with, with it, to be honest. And he enjoyed, like, doing that to me when I was a child. And those, those are the feelings that I wanted to avoid. And that's why, you know, you can see that potentially, like, for your example, with veganism, you didn't have much resistance in your heart to that. So you kind of was just like, oh, like, oh, I've seen this. You're open to like learning more about it. And then because you don't have, you wouldn't have had as much pain inside on that specific area, or you were just open to actually hearing the truth on that subject. And then that allows the other, you know, stuff to occur. And then you get yourself to a point where you're in harmony with God's truth on that specific subject. So you've got to bring real awareness to what you're holding on to yes yeah. and yeah and also like with veganism you've got once you've like absorbed even just the first layer of that truth about you know not wanting to condone the slaughter of animals and malnutrition across the planet it's a pretty black and white choice in front of you every day isn't it when you you know when you're going to make a meal whereas with your finances we can kid ourselves a little bit easier because you're like now i can get by for now i'm you know it's easier to it's easier to it's, it's not as black and white in front of your face as it perhaps is with veganism. And I think that's why also you, once you start to connect with them emotions about veganism, it's very rare that I've noticed someone particularly backtrack on it. it I've certainly noticed people backtrack from veganism, but they, weren't, they didn't connect to the emotions behind it. You know, they were just going vegan because it was a cool thing to do um, mm -hmm. or because you know, it's, a, it's a bit of a trend or they've heard it will make them healthier. That as soon as you've connected to them actual ethical reasons for it, it's, it's highly unlikely that you'll go back. And I think with regards to stuff like your finances, it's if, if you can just find that s s reason in your heart as well as to like why you'd want to, why you want to take the action that you do, then you'll probably, you'll get there a lot easier, I think. Thank you. You're welcome. No worries, mate. Maxime. I feel like parent, I went through the sort of new age belief systems and other things before I came across to my truth. Um, and I even lived in Castlebury for a couple of years, which is the UK centre and all that stuff. Yeah. And if you actually be in there, they can see a lot of inauthenticity in all that stuff. And we've got questions, and that's when I came across to my truth. But what I did know is there are a few people um, in the new age and in life in general that are trying to be more loving in other ways. And I wondered if you could explain the difference between um, okay I mean um, yeah as you alluded to um, Jesus does say that there are two ways we can all grow in love so one's the natural love path where you don't involve God in the process and one is the divine love path where you do involve God and you want that personal relationship with God now um, God gave all of us that choice to decide which one we would like to progress on and um, like just that in itself kind of shows just how awesome actually God is just how God's still giving us the choice to be happy if we want to be when we don't want to connect with God so God has still created another process we can follow whereby it's more based on morality and ethics um, the natural love path uh, yeah the natural uh, love path and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like you've got to ask yourself the question is what I do would I accept um, my behaviour that I do to somebody else back to me and that's like the, the standard ethical question you'd ask yourself in all parts with regards to growing in love on the natural love path 
and it is the same with uh, the divine love path as well because um, like ethics and morality are like coexistent between both and with ethics and morality um, you can kind of still come to certain truths without receiving that truth directly from God by just f- face, basically just looking at those issues morally and ethically and in my experience like of course you you know the, the only true spirituality is when you do grow in love um, any, anyone that says spirituality is you know um, something else is it's not true because um, it is all about growing in love whether it's with God or without God and and, and yes you are right that there are people who do progress on the natural love path and they do get more enjoyment in their lives and more happiness and that is still because they are coming to God's truth on certain topics but just not receiving that directly from God just coming to it through their own experiences and realising the, the joy and the benefits of um, getting to that point in their lives so well, yeah it's kind of like a lot of the time that if I had to bottle the difference between the two down pretty quickly it's like on the natural love path it's, it's kind of more like I will make this happen I want to be a more loving person so I'm going to start taking this more loving action straight away and it's, it's more mind dominant whereas on the divine love path you, because on the natural love path you're doing it yourself for the most part you're not recognizing God and that God can help you do this whereas on the divine love path it's like rather than rather than just trying to force your way into a more loving condition you tr- you're actually you kind of going accepting that i have flaws and that i'm broken and asking god to heal you um, and help you through that process uh, and then you will automatically be more loving as a result of that healing whereas with the natural love it's like you on the natural love path going back to this veganism example again it might be like okay right i've seen this information it's not touched my heart yet but I, i'm gonna i'm gonna um, start doing this because I know it's the more loving thing to do. Whereas this, once you start to allow yourself to sink more into the emotions and allow God to help you with that process, is that's the primary difference, I, I would right. say. I mean, I don't know if that's okay, but I'm quite exhausted with the effort of just trying it on my own. Yeah. And like, yeah, like, even though I don't think it's a divine truth, but also I haven't really been walking and walking yet, but um, I, I think that. Um, I can see that, that God's love is much more powerful than anything I can do myself. Yeah. And that was now that's where that's totally um, for me anyway, right now is different anyway. I've tried I've tried therapies, I've tried psychotherapy, you know, you can aim it to do all that stuff and I got I got exhausted to the point where I, you know, um, ended up probably hurting myself and being more pain and suffering. So I think um, I think you know the, the God's love thing is is a Get the magic solution in ways which you're willing on it. So just looking at you lot, how you progress as I first saw you, it's just really encouraging. Um, one of the major, major turning points in my progression was when there's a saying in the Bible which says, Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all else will be given, something along those lines. And when I really let that hit home and put God first, what happens is like with, with your desire, it's like it's like this desire which wants to grow closer to God. And then as that desire builds, you then, you know, if you're humble enough, you'll start to feel God's love. And then that, because that feels just so amazing, it gives you this driving force to want to keep going. And you're like, I want more of that. 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 Whereas if you was on your own, you don't include God. You'll get to a point where it'll just be too difficult and then you could just give up. And I haven't been... Um, I don't know the spirit world inside out, but just from, as Jesus says, like, there's, you can only progress so far. Because we haven't, for the people who don't know about divine truth, we haven't talked about what happens when you die and when you pass. <laughs> um, so, you know, the little spirit body that I drew before, well, when our physical body dies and then we carry on growing, there's, there's, there's dimensions which can keep going on for eternity. And um, as you develop and grow in love, you keep progressing through these different layers what they call spheres and um, you can only progress so far with your own with your own love and natural then love, yeah. with your own natural love so kind of the question is then like Jesus explains and funny enough I just met a friend the other day and um, she said to me my life feels alright like I feel good I, I like my job I like my relationship and then she goes 
but just something's missing and I don't know what it is. And I was, I, I think that's probably what it feels like when you're in like this sixth fear it's called. Like you'll progress so far, life will be amazing, but there'll just be like this little nagging feeling going, mm. but something missing. is missing. Yeah. And for me, that's what, you, you're missing God's love, you're missing, you're missing God. Yeah. So that, I would summarize that probably with that's the difference between divine love and natural love. Yeah. Like at one point you you may lose the desire to want to grow in love or you just become stagnant and you go, right, yep, I'm the pinnacle now. I don't need to grow anymore. When, in fact, that's not true. We can carry on growing. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks. If we could pass the mic over to Victoria, please. Um, I just thought it might be good um, for Perry to clarify um, that this, this song doesn't always split and attract a masculine and a feminine body. I just thought it might be... Uh, Victoria talked to me in the break, and uh, so just to summarize, if anyone's here who hasn't uh, seen the diagrams that I drew before, um, when the soul splits, you can, in fact, be homosexual, like I drew it from a heterosexual point of view, um, but it is totally possible um, that, you know, the soul can split into two male bodies or two female bodies, um, so you can, you know, have a het- heterosexual relationships or homosexual uh, relationships. And they're both com- yeah. perfectly like normal from God's perspective. It's just obviously from the Earth's perspective there's a lot of um, you know um, a lot of emotions regarding, yeah, regarding that. Uh, particularly from religious beliefs as well. So. Yeah, and, and basically what that happens is, if you remember when I drew the whole soul, are you, are you drawing the whole soul there? Or no, no, I'm going to draw the bell curve. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I can draw. Yeah, we got a soul like this. So you remember? And then uh, like a male, male. So obviously Perry's drawn the soul here. If you, th- this is a, like a standard distribution curve, I think it's called in maths. Yeah. Um, if you if all souls fit somewhere along this curve in terms of their uh, makeup of masculine and feminine qualities, like most, somewhere between 80 to 90% of souls will fit somewhere in this region here where they're a relatively even mix of male and female, and that will then be a heteros- heterosexual soul. Then there's going to be like in the region of like 5 to 10% um, that are heavily masculine dominant, and they, they will be the homosexual soul from a two, two men's perspective. And then likewise, on the other side, 5 to 10%, where it's a female-dominated soul. And when that splits in two halves, because, it's, because there's a lot of female characteristics in that half of the soul, sorry, that soul entirely, when it splits, both halves are still dominantly female. Yeah, so therefore they do attract two feminine... Feminine soul body. attracts two feminine... Uh, bodies on earth okay so it just depends on as you say the dominance of the masculine or feminine quality as to which body it will attract on earth and so both possible what is impossible is bisexuality yeah um so that's always yeah. going to be down to basically unhealed emotions and still uh, you know, and, still errors. Wor- and yeah. errors yeah still working through things so. and so i mean it's pretty amazing i mean like if you think about like just the array of souls God's created. Like it's just absolutely amazing. And you look in life of like all the different types of flowers and fruits and trees and everything that's God created. And then you think of the human soul and the variance of human souls that God's created and all these possibilities. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we've got a question Bex, over here. Question? Bex? Yeah, let's get a mic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have two questions for you guys. Uh, one, I was just thinking on the tube when I came, which it might be obvious, but um, I'm sure a lot of us looked at New Age things before, and a lot of those teachings are like, oh, and, you know, in our 50-second incarnation when we came back as an army soldier, etc. Completely mad in a way. 
yet why do you think us believing Jesus is back now is so putting off for a lot of people, whereas New Age stuff of, let's say, Buddha coming back or someone coming back or that we're in our third time as a soul is less, it's more desirable do you think? Yeah. It's more acceptable. Mm. Yeah. To, to Why? Because both are just as both mind boggling. Both pretty crazy from the offset, right? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people have a lot of preconceptions about Jesus, whereas when somebody says that they're in- reincarnated for the 14th time, they don't have, the person hearing that doesn't often have too many pre existing beliefs about who that person is and whether they've reincarnated all these times. Um, whereas with Jesus, obviously, he's a very well-known figure uh, historically so really kind of it doesn't really matter who who you come across they're going to have some beliefs about Jesus whether they're whether they're a Christian or a Muslim or not religious that you know they're either going to believe that he was a savior that he was a um, just one of the uh, what's the word one of the Um, like the various teachers that came I think prophet prophet, that's it one of the prophets Uh, or you might meet somebody that just doesn't think that Jesus exists at all sort of thing but they've they've all got some preconception about Jesus so when you then say that yeah I'm you know I've found this thing called divine truth it's Jesus and Mary that I think that plays into it a lot of the time yeah. I feel a lot of it is related to the actual beliefs of the person so for example when people um like may talk about like Buddha reincarnating or like they're in the third life or whatever that's in harmony with those teachings you see so um, from God's perspective that's not true but it's just an errant belief and I feel um, a lot of the times why there's such a big um, like issue and people have a lot of emotions about Jesus because of what is written in, in the Bible and what religions generally kind of believe will happen when Jesus comes back to earth as it was prophesied in these books so people have their own preconceived ideas of who Jesus is and what he what he actually is and who you know who he is what he's going to do and and I feel that's why there's probably you know um, more like like stronger beliefs with regards to that rather than someone who's like believes in the reincarnation process as to how it's actually taught well as to how people believe on earth rather than the actual truth from God's perspective that Jesus does teach yeah I just wanted to add also I, I find it's, it's, it's really quite easy to kind of take on the reincarnation process so say if like you've got an issue in your life um, say that like you just hurt yourself like you've injured your shoulder and then you go to someone who's a spiritual teacher and they say to you Okay, oh, it's because, you know, 100 lives ago you were a warrior and what happens is the guy came and, and, and he stabbed you in the shoulder and then you had this massive love affair thing going on. You suddenly start to go like, oh, really? Wow, that sounds awesome. I was a soldier. I got stabbed in my shoulder. And like, you don't, you don't think about what the emotion is driving. Like, like if, 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 that was, if that happened to me, I go, right, my shoulder's hurting me. It's on the left side of my body, and then I start to pray about the emotions underneath it, and then there'll be some grief where the majority of people don't want to feel the grief. Like so, it's it's, it's easier to listen to a story than just believe that, and then and then just kind of like go up for that. Yeah. Or if like you have a relationship, you know, you cheat on your girlfriend, and then you go, oh, why am I doing this? Thing? Oh, it's because in the past lives we were lovers and we were married, and then this happened. And, you just don't feel the morality going on with it. You just kind of make up a story. So it's like a get-out clause, I find. Yeah. yeah. And that leads me on to prayer, which is my next question. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm still confused or, or still worry if I'm praying right. And then I'm confused because Jesus said you know, whatever you're actually feeling, you're praying anyway. So he, uh, I've often heard him say, you know, you guys are all making fear your God. That's your prayer is what you're scared of. So let's say I'm scared of drowning. You know, water and sea is always on my mind. And that's my prayer kind of unconsciously because I'm so scared of it. And uh, the reason, and I've seen prayer work, um, 
and recently I was in such a rut and frozen in this paralyzed just unhappiness and um, and I don't know if I prayed to God or if I was just oozing prayer like please find a way out and then I came across the fear of change seminars and there was just one thing bam where he said um, desire change have faith that the outcome is possible make an action and feel the emotions and that's helped everything and so that prayer came true but I didn't go God please give me a change so where's the difference between what you're just oozing out of you your will in a way and when you say, please, God, blah, blah, blah. And Nikki and Perry, when I was with you and felt God's love, I didn't say, please, God, let me feel your love. So I'm confused. Yeah. Um, well, it's all, uh, prayer is actually all based on our actual feelings in our soul. So, yes, sometimes you, you, you use your will to actually, you know, make the choice to actually pray consciously. And when I say consciously, it's like, you know, in your mind, that's what you're going to do. And so you, the prayer will come from the heart and that, at that time um, to pray. But also, I'm, I've experienced this as well, is that when I've just had a random question, like in my day, and I've just kind of felt, oh, I'd just really love to know the answer to that. And if the actual desire in your heart is pure, that's almost like a prayer as well in itself to God. And then because you're in harmony with that law, of God's of desire, then God will answer that prayer. So it's it's all it's not kind of you know like putting your hands together and praying. It is all based on that feeling in your heart at that specific moment in time, and whether it's a pure feeling and a sincere feeling. And do you find it easier to pray sincerely when you say please or God, blah blah blah, or not? Because I know you guys have often said and. Jesus says a lot, you know, God, if you're there, please let me feel your love through this pain, etc. Um, My experience is, yeah, like I, I have the feeling that I want to pray to God. But initially, when I didn't know God existed, my, my prayer was, I don't know if you exist. You know, please show me. So I guess it will just happen. Like you'll start to feel about it over time. And always when I'm sincere is when I get the feeling coming, which uh, Pete was talking about earlier, about the truth. It's like the truth cracks open your heart and then the love comes in. And if, you ha if you're not feeling that, my, in my experiences, well, then you, weren't, you wasn't being truthful. Thank you. And just quickly, just to add uh, for 10 seconds, I mean, I wasn't there, but this sense that I probably get from that experience that you detailed when you were with Nikki and Perry was that, again as much as you weren't you, as much as you may not have said in your head at that time god let me feel your love your heart did did echo that at that time open. that it was open that's why which is why i was desperate it yeah. was desperation not inspiration yeah unfortunately. and but that it was a real prayer because it came from your heart you know whereas a lot of the time we do kind of get wrapped up in praying up here but I think Nikki described the difference pretty well there. So. And, that, and that's why you can also get atheists who don't believe in God, feels God's love, because it's actually what's going on in their soul and not in their mind. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Any more questions? Probably got time for, uh, what, when do we need to stop? The quarter past. So we've probably got time for one or two more. Tom? Okay. Hi, is, it, is it Tom, is yeah. it? Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Hi guys. Hey. Hi guys. There we go. Yeah, it um, just needs to be pretty. I'm just close. interested. Um, what are your plans for the future? So you've obviously established something in the UK now. I'm just interested. What kind of ideas you've had for obviously doing more of it, basically? Yeah. So. Good question. Um, yeah. Is it actually we're going to we're going to come to that. So it's awesome you actually asked that question. Um, so as some of you may know, I basically ended up creating a website called Divine Truth Hub. And on there, I created a forum so that anyone in the world can go on and talk about the principles that Jesus and Mary teach. And then from then, um, myself and Perry decided to create a YouTube channel and where we just talk about our own personal experiences and relate that back to, you know, like Jesus and Mary's teachings and what we've learned. And I guess now it's the case of, like, 
the next step, the next logical step, and the next step we felt was the right one to take is to basically set up a seminar. So this is where we are today. And it's kind of like, like this seminar is based off more our own desire to actually want to set up a seminar and take part in the experience. And if you know whoever whoever else turns up, then that's awesome, and we can share what we've learned with those people. And I guess in the future, it will be a, probably a mix of our desire to set up a, a, you know, future events, but also it depends a lot on uh, the desire of other people as well. So we are open to um, conduct talks based on um, a natural desire expressed to us by like one person or group of people, and then we can arrange a talk through that as well. So we're kind of, kind of just basing off our own feelings and also, you know, the desire expressed by others. And, um, and then, yeah, we're just going to carry on like this. Um, and, like, we've got all the equipment now. We've purchased all of that. So uh, we can transport that around. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to go wherever God takes us, basically. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, and also, in the... In the future, we, we really want to create a learning center. Yeah, that's one of our passions. Like we're super excited about that. Um, but for that to happen, there's a process, and um, so this is a part of that process. So, like Nikki and I and, and, and Pete, like we're just so excited about wanting to. Like our, I guess, like our mission really is to teach and get the word out about divine truth. Um, obviously, that relates heavily back to also back to Jesus and Mary. Um, and so, you know, we'll go through our own progression and then hopefully down the line we'll be able to then also, like, help people with their own souls and stuff like that. Um, but then ultimately, at the, at the moment, we kind of, we really want to create the learning center. Um, and we spoke with Jesus and Mary about that and there's some things in the background kind of happening towards that, but nothing's set in stone at the moment. Yeah. And just to mention this now, seeing as we seem to be on this topic, uh, another thing that I've recently decided to create is I'm, gonna, I'm starting a podcast called Divine Truth Podcast so for those of you here and anybody that happens to be watching the video um, yeah it's just intended to be another way to basically share truth so Nikki and Perry like they said have already created the YouTube channel so there's, uh, there's plenty of videos on there and there'll be a lot more I'm sure and yeah the idea with this podcast is just for it to be like a really um, a real natural organic conversation between myself and another person or a couple of other people uh, and yeah, it'll probably just be done over the internet a lot of the time. I've got all the equipment at home now to record it. And yeah, I'd just love to speak to anybody that's uh, interested. And yeah, we'll just have some good chats and it'll be there. It's just basically so that there's another format to share divine truth, you know, so that there's as many different opportunities as possible. Because the great thing with podcasts is that you can listen to them whilst you're at the gym or you can have it playing through your car whilst you're on a drive somewhere. So. I just wanted to create that uh, another opportunity there. So yeah, that's on divinetruthpodcast.com if anybody does want to uh, to listen to it or to get in touch and uh, and have a chat with me. And uh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, I probably will be at some point um, potentially uh, looking at getting the podcast onto the forum as well, just to give people a link there, um, and then also potentially uh, adding a link to that podcast on our site, Divine Truth Hub as well so um, it would be easily accessible yeah. should anyone wish to um, either take part or listen to to the episodes really yeah. so so yeah they're, uh, sorry go on mate no, I, was, I was just going to say Angela's got a question but if you haven't finished sure. then no yeah I think we're finished yeah. 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 does yeah, that answer got, your yeah. question Tom okay. yeah Can if you've got a question yeah. we've got time it wasn't a question okay <laughs> um, I was just going to say I was going to ask So, oh, I'm just so impressed with what you've done and seeing all the equipment you have. Thank you. Um, um, and, um, yeah, and Kerry, something you said um, about, um, I'm sorry, you have heard this before to people, nothing. Does it matter if you've heard? Because we've all heard so much. Now, whether or not we've really, really, really heard it's not. So I don't think that is at all about um, repeating anything. You know, you were kind of apologetic, I felt, about sure. 
say, oh, I know some of you have heard this before, but and I was so, oh, so grateful. Yeah, it's funny because I had that. Um, feeling last night when I was thinking about it I was like yeah but people have heard this before and then I was like Jesus says this stuff all the time <laughs> so the truth is the truth and then I was like but even in the, even in 10 years time I'm still going to be drawing the same thing <laughs> so then I was like I better get over that feeling of like being apologetic if you've heard it before because yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and I mean something in each of what you say actually really touched me awesome yeah, that's I, wicked I, I think it's uh, also really awesome how kind of when you have a feeling and a desire to want to do something things come to you but also you have a chance to then learn about new things and as I said at the, right at the start I knew nothing about camera equipment you know video in sound <laughs> I had no idea about it um, and yeah what I ended up doing I basically um, with the money I'd saved up from my banking job I ended up quitting that completely just to focus entirely on divine truth because I know that's what I want to do with my life. So I, you know, I ended up purchasing um, a camera um, and all the equipment with that. Um, and then with the donations that I've already received from people through the website, through the forum, I've ended up purchasing the sound equipment as well. Um, just so that when we do have seminars, we, can, we have all of our own equipment and, and stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean that's just one thing I would like to say. I'd just like to um, say to, uh, to anyone who has actually donated, thank you so much, like from the bottom of my heart, because it just actually means so much. Because I know this is what I want to do, and I know a lot of it relies on the generosity and, and love that other people show to me for doing what I do, and I'll always be thankful for that. Um, and then also to the people who are listening on YouTube as well. Uh, people who, who are from overseas um, who aren't here today, I just want to express my gratitude to all of them. Um, and they've actually helped um, allow this to take place, really, through their generosity. Um, so, so, yeah. That's, uh, that's I just want to also say thanks to Nick for buying all the stuff as well with his savings and the donation money, because it's also helped me in, uh, to start creating my passions and desires as well. So like it's so amazing like to have all this tech so that we can present in the best way possible. Like so yeah, so Nick I'm I've said it to him before but I just <laughs> yeah. want to do it publicly as well. I'm so grateful. And um yeah, so in the in the future we just want to do like more of this basically. And then and then who knows? Yeah, yeah we'll probably end up see where it takes a van us. as well. We'll end up probably buying a transit van or something <laughs> just for all our equipment if we uh, ever have to go anywhere. And, yeah. um, and obviously, we, we are completely up for talking anywhere, um, depending on, as I said, if people want to hear us speak, then we'll look into that and arrange that. And then also, um, we'll be uh, potentially setting up events ourselves. And all of the information regarding any future events will be found on our website, Divine Truth Hub, on the events page. So if you are interested and maybe want to um, continue coming to seminars or seeing where we're next talking, then I'd say just to uh, keep your eye out on that page. And, um, and then, yeah, um, I guess we'll, we'll see you. Hopefully see some of you again, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's so amazing being up here, actually, and doing this. I'm it's just quite surreal, that. isn't it? It feels like the best so day ever in my life. Yeah. <laughs> ever ever and I know I've got a, such a long way to go in my progression and obviously when you see Jesus present and you're like how oh, on earth is he not all this stuff and like I will never get there you know it's um, like it's getting I'm just like just this last few weeks I've just been having a lot more self love with myself and going this is where I'm at this is what I'm doing this is what I know to be true and you just keep going basically yeah. we're not going to pretend yeah. we know things that we don't yeah. we're just going to be honest and, and just the little that we have received and learnt in, in these short few years, you know, it's just inspired us so much just to keep on going. And, and uh, sharing that with everyone else who, who, who have the desire to actually maybe want to learn something else. So, you know, we don't force this on anyone. Um, we don't feel that's a loving thing to do. So, yeah. And that's relating back to the God question as well. Is like when your own desire is to focus on God, like you don't really mind if people follow you or not. Like... Or follow the teachings, should I say? It's because like you just focus. Like I want to do this, and I'm going. And then you just follow. You just be who you are. You do what you do, 
and then whatever happens around you just starts to happen naturally so you don't have to market and do all these things to try and get people to do stuff it's all done in a loving way yeah and um, it's kind of like an aut automatic thing really um, it's like when you receive some of god's love you want to be able to give that knowledge that you received from god to other people depending on how open they are it's just an automatic thing i've realized it's just you want to help god because you, like i know how much i mean to god and i know that we're all equal <laughs> and just how much we all mean to God. And so, like, I can't see anything better than actually assisting my other brothers and sisters to get to a point when they know that for certain themselves and they have that relationship with God and, um, and actually receive the greatest gift um, in the entire universe to actually receive it. So, um, yeah, that's really important. Awesome. Any more questions? Because we've got about five minutes left. We've actually got a little surprise for you all as well. Yeah, oh, just quickly, Maxine's got a question. A quick thought, thinking about the 2000s, what I've realised is that God's ways is really simple, actually, mm -hmm. in many ways, and we're the ones that complicate it, and I'm the ones that are even responsible for blocking it and resisting it and all the rest of it. So this is what I've really started to enjoy lately. It's, 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 it's so simple. Everything from the soulmate thing, that one person for us, that's simple. It saves going through all the done to people who think about it. I've had to go through it before, but it's like, just look for that one person, God made perfect for me. So, yeah, as I would think. It's simple to understand, isn't it? But it's hard to actually do it. It is, God designed the whole process so that you know a, ch a child could uh, could understand it and uh, and carry it out no uh, no problem. And if we actually look, babies do, you know, and young children tend to carry out this process with a lot less resistance than we do. You know, you they are humble, aren't they? They are humble. It's very rare that you, uh, you know, that something makes a baby upset and it thinks, oh, you know, what? I'm not going to cry. I'm going to go and drown myself in all this food over here or something, you know, they allow it to flow straight away. The tears just come in. They're not worried about who sees they're not, them crying. They're not worried yeah. about who's around. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it it is like you said, it's uh it's a very simple process at heart. Yeah. So so yeah, yeah we've got a little thing we've arranged, haven't we? Yeah, is is there any last I don't I actually haven't really got any more time for questions. I guess what we would say mm -hmm. is that um if you do, we talked about donations before. If you do want to leave donations for everything that we've done today, and you feel like you want to express that, we have a, a donations. We have a, a, a cereal box <laughs> that we made last minute. <laughs> <laughs> we literally made that last minute last night. Thanks, at, Pete. At, <laughs> uh, over at the back, so that will uh, yeah. help pay for the hall that we've hired and um, all the things that we've bought, and then in the future um, we can pay to do more events and stuff like that. Um, there's also. Uh, a page on the, the website as well if um, you want to donate that way as well you can electronically. Do it electronically and um, again that goes to funding events and future projects and um, yeah so we've got yeah we've got a surprise and uh, it came from uh, Nikki yeah. got the idea and I just loved it so we're going to do it and it's a song not, we're not going to sing <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> got the mics ready yeah and, uh, <coughs> Just because this song just like really touches it, kind of sums up like what we feel about God. And if there was one so thing that we could kind of like wherever we go, probably and everyone, every individual we speak to, like we hope that that they get touched and they go away, and then possibly they might want to then discover everything that we've talked about themselves. And so, where's the uh, yeah? Is it in your bag? 
Is that, is that your boombox? Is oh, that yeah, what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah. Just so we're going to play a song, which is uh, on YouTube. You just listen, basically, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to stand up or... <laughs> <laughs> you, don't have, yeah. you don't have to salute or anything like yeah. that. Um, yeah, one, one thing we'll say, it's like, it, it, it's, the song is really amazing. Um, it's special to both me and Perry. I know Pete's recently been introduced to this through for ourselves, and I feel like the lyrics are so simple. Like, it's really easy to just listen to, but also it lets you, f like, feel more about God and about yourself. And, and also, I guess it opens your heart to even experimenting with all of this because the only way we've come to these truths is by our own personal experimentation. And um, the great experiment is asking God to receive God's love. That is, like, the great experiment. So um, it could be even worthwhile just even experimenting right now when the song's playing, see what happens. Um, try that for yourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just yeah. want to thank you guys all for coming. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. And if you want to know more, you can uh, follow the links. Anybody who's watching on YouTube, follow the links.